for centuries, mankind has been fascinated with realms outside of our conscious awareness. Through a series of interviews with practitioners, guest speakers, and experts, Liberate the podcast covers all that and more, from health and holistic healing to the supernatural. We aim to educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Liberate the Podcast. This is going to be one of my most excited interviews to do. It's with the, I would say, most famous astrologer in the world, Susan Miller. She has Astrology Zone. She writes for over nine different magazines. She's been featured on TV shows all over. She is the astrologer. I don't think that there's another one right here that, <laughs> you know, that can live up to her status. And so I'm very honored uh-huh. to be sitting here with her and have the, you know, amazing ability to interview her and hear about some things that I don't think you'll normally, my questions today, I think we're going to see where it flows and goes, but I want to ask uh, some unconventional questions. Oh, I love that. <laughs> thank you. So welcome. Thank you for joining oh, us. I was so excited. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so Susan, um, you know, you've been doing astrology for Pretty much your whole whole lifetime. I mean, your your mom was a uh, an astrologer. astrologer. Your your aunt was an astrologer, right? Yes. Before she died, she's the one that got my mother interested in it. But actually, my mother was resisting. My aunt said, "Please study it with me," and my mother said, "No, it doesn't work." And that's a good point. No astrologer believes in astrology before they study it, and people don't assume yeah. that. None of us do. Uh, you can ask any astrologer. It's like, no, it's counterintuitive. You know, how could it work? And we don't know why it works. We don't really know why. But there's lots of things in the world we don't know why. There are black holes or wormholes or many things in science. I mean, I don't even don't. know how electricity works, but yet it works. <laughs> right. I mean, I flip the light switch and there we go, you know? <laughs> well, when you think of counterintuitive things like getting on a piece of metal that weighs many tons and flying from New York to LA is counterintuitive or, or injecting yourself with mold and that's penicillin and it gets you better. I mean, yeah. Even now they're doing soldiers who lost an arm are thinking about lifting up the cup rather because they, they just have a prosthetic and uh. they're doing it through thought. Oh yeah. So I mean, there was a, this thing yeah. that um, I, I studied with a, a neurologist for a while, and there was this device that they had where you would play with the ball and try to think it to move. And oh it, yeah, yeah, it was well so with cool. chaos theory when you observe molecules, they change, and they don't know why. Just the act of observing them, they seem to know you're observing them. How is that possible? They still haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. So we don't know why astrology works. There's a lot of theories, but nothing's been proven. Mm. But astrology is the uh, study of mathematical cycles. It has nothing to do with predestination. You're always in charge. That's what I love about it. You have free will. I can tell you it's a great time to say, buy a house and say, no, I like my house. I, I want to stay where I am. You can. You can renovate or you could do things on a very small scale, like buy new linens and new dishes. And uh, maybe you could buy a new table. So you can do things on a small scale or a large scale. Mm. Well, mm-hmm. what about like a, on, on a bigger scale of uh, instead of individual free will? I mean, I'm you have the kind of predestined um events and tragedies or or um, changes in the world that happen that happen on cycles too. Well, I don't know if they're predestined, but you are given, so to speak, a deck of cards, you know, and, and how it's... Some people have very tough charts. I do. I have one of the toughest charts ever, but it's what you do with it. And mm. some... What's interesting in astrology, I don't know if a lot of people know this, when you have a lot of squares and oppositions, which is tough gives the chart so much energy. So that person is so determined and, and, and works so hard to overcome it. Whereas a, a very easy chart with trines and just, it's like sitting under a tree in the summer and having wine and petty fours and falling asleep. You get everything you want, but mm-hmm. you don't have to fight for it. So maybe you never go as far as you could have gone 
yeah. had you had some oppositions in your life. But we all have some challenge. I mean, you can't get to 42 without having your little boat bash against the rocks and yeah. have to figure it out. Usually between 40 and 42 is a big year because it's Uranus opposition, the place it was at your birth. So we call it Uranus opposition, Uranus. And uh, it's a time of splitting away from situations that have been debilitating where some people move overseas or, um, well, a lot of people get divorced at that time, but... Other people say, I can't work for a corporation anymore. I'm going to start my own business. Whatever it is, there's mm-hmm. a tearing away of an old circumstance and going to a new one. 29 is a big year, too. In astrology, we don't believe you're mature until you're tw- 28 and a half or 29. Because Saturn, the great teacher, mm-hmm. has to go through all 12 houses. Mm. So you get wisdom from all areas of life, and then you're mature. So we we don't think 18 or 21 is anywhere near ready. (laughs) And usually at 29, you make a big decision to get married, have a baby, write a book, start a business, get your master's degree, something you commit to. Mm. And it's usually something you can't undo later. Like when you buy a house, you can't say, oh, I shouldn't have bought that. I think I'm going to bring it back. It's not like yeah, that. It gets it, too expensive, that, too yeah. much paperwork. So, But that, the whole reason you're doing it is to give a foundation to your life. So that would that be true for 58 then too? Yes, but since Saturn rules older age, the older you get, the more comfortable you are with Saturn. Mm. And theoretically, you've learned just about everything when you were 28. So a lot of people say, I hardly felt it. Although President Bush did have a hard 58 because that's when we had 9-11. Wow. And he couldn't have prepared for that. I mean, good people don't think like that. You know, if they were, somebody would put planes in, into buildings with children yeah. on the planes and everything and innocent people. So, um, so there are the cases where 58 is a hard year, but... For most people, it's not because they've learned so much when they were 28 and or 29. Okay. Now, <laughs> how do you think that astrology ties in with spirituality and healing and using those aspects? I mean, having a healing center and utilizing it as a tool for those tra- kind of transformations. Well, it calms you down. You realize that you're getting tested for a reason. And... You tend not to have that why me kind of question. Mm -hmm. We all get it. You know, when you're going through a hard time or maybe you're in pain uh, and you look out the window and everyone looks like they know where they're going, they know what they're doing, their life is in perfect order. And that's just an illusion. Everybody is dealing with something that they wish they could fix. And, And many people will fix it, but it takes time. And we have to learn patience and we have to do it step by step. Um... You talked about spirituality. I don't feel that astrology is a replacement for religion. As a matter of fact, I feel God created astrology to help us understand life. And in the horoscope wheel, the ninth house is the house of dogma of all religions. You know, what Mm -hmm. is the intellectual basis of the religion? And the twelfth house is belief. Mm -hmm. You just either believe or you don't. It comes from your heart. And those two houses work together for religion. So it's not replacement for religion. That's not to say everybody needs to be religious. But I feel the role of religion is to teach us ethics and how to treat each other. And um, I love the Bible stories and all that. I'm so Catholic. (laughs) The lives of saints, you know. When you smell roses, it means St. Teresa is near. I I just love these mystical things. But (laughs) but that's just me. Astrology helps you have an examined life, which Mm -hmm. I think it was Socrates who said uh, the unexamined life was not worth living, which is an extreme statement. But still, time can go through your fingers. Yeah. You need some signposts. And sometimes we're very focused on something going on over on the right-hand side when there's all this good, all these plums hanging off a tree that you can take. It's ready. It's ripe for you to take advantage of. But you're too preoccupied with the, the hard thing that you have to solve. My job is to show you all that's going on. Yeah. And, you know, to take advantage. And it is also my job to push you a little bit. 
like I said to you, <laughs> Virgo lately, <laughs> you're really talented with communication. This is the year, 2018, for your, your manuscript to get published or your book to come out or your cover story or your podcast or your blog. And Virgo's a perfectionist. And they'll say, but I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah, but it's now or never. You're going to have to wait 12 years for this to happen again. So I want you to present to the powers that be. And you don't have to write the whole book. You write three chapters, then you write a proposal. Mm-hmm. Who would read the book? Why would they read it? What age group would read it? You know, you give a little, a little personality to what <laughs> the reader yeah. is like. You don't have to, to finish the whole, bake the whole cake. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> and I, I want to push them and say, it's now or never. You have to take a step. With astrology, when you have a new moon, you plant a seed. Yeah. You don't have to get everything solved with that one seed, but you have to make a little start. Yeah, it's like you looking know? at the the bird's eye view in your map and seeing that there's no traffic over here. This is a perfect route. Like, why are you going to continue to stay on this road when, you know, here it's uh, open territory? It's interesting you put it this way. I think of myself as a, um, like you're in your little airplane and I'm showing you the weather Uh and the route we're going to take. And and let's say it's really horrible for you to uh, find a new job right now. I'm like, oh boy, all these obstacles. But you say, I can't stand my job. I have to find a job has to do it right away. I'm like, oh boy. Okay. Well, we can. (laughs) You have to expect a little bit of a bumpy period. It's going to take you a little longer than you thought. It's turbulent. But I will give you, (laughs) but I'll give you the route. And by the way, uh, there's these friends are fantastic for you. So you should start asking your friends for ideas, tips, anything they hear on the street. I really believe in street information. You hear it first before you even read it in the New York Times, you know. Yeah. And um, and join a club because that's the same friendship house as like uh, clubs or groups that, well, see, you're putting people together so they should come to liberate Hollywood and get to know each other. And we're all here to help each other. Yeah. So when you have something you really want, I want a new job and this is what I want to do. You have to be pretty clear about what you want to do. A lot of people give me a far away look when I say, what kind of job? They're like, oh, hmm. Well, <laughs> yeah, they, they don't know their self. They're like sitting there just going in, in a hypnotic state through yeah. life. And they're like, they haven't asked their self, which I think astrology is one of those you know, territory of examining your life, um, that, that you're saying that it gives people that ability to look at it and get to know their self maybe a little bit better. This is who I am. This is why I am this way. Oh, you know each other much better, much, much better when you do astrology. You know your talents. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people. There was a, there was a company that said, you have to talk to 30 beauty editors. I'm like, oh, Lord. Okay, five minutes each. Well, that's never going to be. It's usually a half hour at the very minimum. And I said to one of them, "Um, you really want to write a book. You'd actually love to leave the company. Oh, no, no. And I said, no, you do. Wait a minute. You already wrote a book. (gasps) Wait a minute. And she's, she's denying everything. I said, there's an option on one of the books you wrote. Wait, there's an option on two of the books you wrote. There's a movie option on two. I've never said this to anybody. She said, all right, I have to confess you're right. I was trying to keep it a secret. <laughs> I'm like, well, no, you can't keep a secret from me. But it was right there, and I can't believe I saw it. There's, I've never said that to anybody. But you can see talent. That's the thing I love to look for in a chart. Talent. You know, money gets old. They could pay you a lot, but if you're not passionate about what you do, you're just not going to grow. You have to love it. And you have to it has to make you think of new ideas and fresh things to do and add to it. Like what you're doing. You have this vision of liberate stores everywhere. <laughs> and I love it. And you have to have a dream in your pocket because you never know when you're going to be on the elevator with Mr. Big. Yeah. And they say, So, what would you like to do? And you say, Well, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and you say, well, that's really good. Here's my card. Let's talk next week. You know, you really have to be ready. And so You know what experts say? If you can envision your life like a little movie Mm -hmm. and 
imagine yourself sitting at your desk, the flowers on your desk, the pen you're using or the computer, the telephone calls you're getting. If you can imagine a little scene like that, it will help you make it real. Yeah. yeah experts talk about that a lot. And uh, that visualization, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, and definiteness yeah. of purpose that that, you know. Yeah. You know, and I think when people are really clear on on their direction, you know. I think I was lucky because I had a mother that was, <laughs> so she used to say things to us like, she said to me, when you grow up, you have to produce or get out. She must have said that 800 times to me, produce or get out, produce or get out. She was right. <laughs> And, and my father would say a hundred times, rules are meant to be broken. When people say it's a rule, it's a policy, say rules are meant to be broken. Unless it's like tax rules, then you have to follow those. But I love that. I mean, they were always giving me advice. And I think it's a family's job to keep the kids realistic and on track. You know, that when my daughter came to me and said she wanted to major in theater... I said, it's hard to get a job, so why don't you major in some liberal arts, and then I'll send you to graduate school. I said, Mommy, are you crazy? I said, no, well, I mean, I'll keep my promise. So she majored in sociology, and she was about to graduate. Her little sister was still in college. I said, well, do you want to go to graduate school and make that film? She said, Mommy, really? I mean, that's so much money. I said, actually, I get a break if I have two kids in college. So actually that year <laughs> would not be that much for you. So I, so she did it. <laughs> and I try to keep my promises. But I think as parents, we have to be realistic. They're fi- kids are facing a, a tough world and mm-hmm. um, we have to prepare them. So the, the kids who aren't Uh, clear about what they want to do, either have been pressured by their family to go into something they don't want to do, like accounting or medicine or something they just didn't feel right for, or their parents didn't ask them anything. Yeah. And, and okay, so say you're that person. Studying astrology is so good because the ascendant, and people also have heard the term rising sun, if you know your rising sign, that is the sign that dictates the profession. Mm. So, um, you know, I can tell if someone should be self-employed or would like actually to work for other people and, and be like the little Capricorns and climb up the mountain, <laughs> the little goats to the top. Uh, Capricorns tend to like to see those layers where Aries are like, I want to be by myself. I yeah. want, you know, and I can tell the kind of environment you do well And when I read a chart, and the little time I have, because I'm writing so much, and I also have an app, if you on uh, Apple and Google, you just search Susan Miller and and you get it right away. I come up first. The the icon is A Z for Astrology Zone. But um, if if you uh, if you do a chart, I can I can say different talents, and then I look for the person to tell me what it is that they liked. There's another technique I have, and I read about it when I was like 18, and it was in Glamour magazine, and I wish I could find this article. A social scientist will ask you to make a list of five or ten things that you're most proud of, but they don't have to be connected to each other. For example, when I published my first book, I would put that down Mm -hmm. on my first website, Astrology Zone. But also when the school asked me, they they came to me and they said, "Um, you're going to be the costume designer for the entire school pageant, all 10 scenes and uh, all the children, all different ages, and you'll have some mothers who are volunteers. I'm like, oh, my God. (laughs) Do they know how to sew? Oh, no, they don't. Oh, okay. Well, I came up with the best designs. I sketched them. I had... You know, some were felt, and, you know, I was in a pizza shop. I said, that bell up there, I need it. (laughs) He said, who are you? I said, could you get on the ladder? I'm doing it for the church. Oh, okay, okay. (laughs) He runs up against it, and I cut it out, and the little girls had beautiful bells and and with green ribbon and, you know, like little sandwich boards only made out of felt, and I had birds with streamers and everything. And I got a standing ovation, and I got this big bouquet of flowers. I had mothers doing rhinestones on on tulle. You know, there were a few mothers that knew how to sew, but I tried to do as many 
outfits that I could with paste and with rhinestones and things that we didn't need that. And I, it still stands out in my life as one of my happiest things. Also, I did, um, you know that movie where the girl goes through uh, the cookbook of uh, Julia Child? Well, I did the same thing. I didn't make every single recipe, but a lot of them. And my my souffle, my Grand Marnier souffle, is one of my great achievements. I have the copper bowl, the balloon whisk. And they're perfect. And um, so I would put that on the list. So then the social scientist says, um, take a look at your list. So I'm telling you, if you're listening now, you may want to stop the tape for a minute, write down your list, and then your job is to find the link that connects them. Mm. What is the undergrad? Now, for me, I, <laughs> this is not good news, but <laughs> I have to be in a hijink situation where a lot of people are watching me and I'll either fall through the floor and never work again or rise to the top. It's like hijinks, yeah. you know? And um, one of the things on my list was when I was an agent for um, commercial photographers, I took one of my young unknown astrologer, uh, photographers and um, I cracked Coca-Cola for the world and unseated all the people that, the great Hashi, the great Perla, all the great astrologers, my guy was better, and I knew it, and I got the top bid, too. I was charging a lot. I still got it, and I kept getting it. We, So I would have put that on the list, but high jinx, where yeah. my reputation was always involved. Now, other people might say, I always excel when I have a coach. Other people say, I have to do a lot of research, mm -hmm. you know, and you just have to find the thread. Sometimes you have to think about it. But they say if you can replicate that thread, you will succeed over and over and over. Ah. Oh, that was such an interesting article. And I've looked everywhere. I'm trying to find it again. And it was just, you know, just a, it wasn't even a cover story. See, this and might it just change my life. A you know? chain, you just do a little twist to it <laughs> and incorporate some astrology with yeah. it. And then you rewrite the article. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good idea. I just think any anything that makes you think. I have there's a book that I love that's a crazy name. It's called A Whack on the Side of the Head by Roger Van Oaks. And it's a 60s book and the illustrations are so 60s. Oh my gosh. It's so out it's now in, you know what I mean? But it will help you shake up your creative thinking. Um, let's say you have a big problem and you just can't find the answer. It says, go to the dictionary, go to page 147, the fifth word down, and find a connection between your problem and that word. You know, you're introducing randomness into your life because we tend to be too cookie cutter. Yeah. And I, I love this book. There's one instance, and I read a lot of books on creativity. I think it was in this book, but it could have been another one, where in ancient days they had to go to the, uh, the oracle at Delphi. And the rule was you had to listen to her. It was disrespectful not to follow her advice. So this little town was going to be under siege by an approaching army, and they were totally unprepared, and they didn't know what to do. So all the little townspeople went down to Delphi, and they asked her, what shall I do? And she said, build a wooden fence. And they were so disappointed with that answer. So they all went back to the village, and they said, Oh, we have to follow her, but that's not going to work. So they're sitting there thinking and thinking until one of them raises their hand. Say, all our boats are made out of wood, right? Yeah. What if we take all our boats and put them stem to stern in a line, like a fence? They did it, and they won, and it saved them. So, oh, I got goosebumps just now. <laughs> Sometimes them. you have to shake up your thinking because you're going down the same path too often. You have to change your thinking. You know? Now, in the astrological community, I, I'm not as well known as all the other people. So I'd go to the clubs and nobody would talk to me. So I thought they didn't like me because I didn't come up through the club. I wasn't taught from the club. I was taught from my mother. Mm -hmm. Well, my mother studied astrology eight years through a correspondence class and, and then kept studying. She was a real scholar. She never had people over the house, never did consultations. She just kept studying. 
And I was her firstborn, and I was born very, very sick, so she was always trying to find the answer, which she was getting very close to. She actually did find the answer. But nevertheless, um, uh, where was I going with that? Wait a minute. Um, the, the shaking up the creativity and oh, finding yeah. the creativity. And uh, so you're uh, this person that's not really accepted in the club, and you're oh, going walking oh, in. Oh, so here's an example of changing your thinking. So I'd go to these conventions. Nobody would talk to me. I thought, oh, they're so clicky. I wish somebody would say hello. And one, one person did, actually, but it was few and far between. And I went home after, like, five years of going to these conferences. I said, wait a minute, Susie Miller, maybe it's your fault. Maybe they think you don't want to be friends with them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have my beautiful calendars the year ahead. They're gorgeous. So I made a list of some of the most interesting people in the club, and I go to the bell captain, I put them all in beautiful envelopes, I gave them a tip, and I said, would you, you know, send these to the rooms of these people? So I did. Totally changed everything. Shifted the energy. Everyone was my friend. Oh, this is really beautiful. I can't believe you do these from scratch. And, oh, let's grab lunch. And it was my fault I didn't have any friends. It wasn't their fault. So then you think about all the girls who are looking for love. Mm -hmm. Are they really looking for love? Or is this not a good time? Are they still disappointed? Or do they need a little time to recover? Or, yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes we have to look at ourselves first. Or almost always. Yeah, always. <laughs> yeah. What's going on yeah. with us? You know. <laughs> what can I be doing to contribute to the situation? So, um, yeah, yeah, I, and, and I think about like, things all the time. Like walking down the street, I just think about things, you know. And, uh, well, I mean, you know, you're analyzing the world over and over again. Yeah. And every person that you meet and you're seeing how they, how they are in comparison and what, what influences them, what activates elements inside of them. And so your mind must just be going like a million miles an hour every, <laughs> two, every time you meet someone. Well, I'm always thinking, and culture has a, a, an effect. You see, women are working, they're educated, but the problem is they're not getting married as early, and the media makes you think you can have a baby at 50 like Janet Jackson, and the media yeah. doesn't tell you how much it costs yeah. to do that. And men are telling me that girls are saying, do you want children the, on the first date? <laughs> like, how soon? You know? And uh, <laughs> I find the new trend of freezing their eggs is helping. Yeah. And the sooner they do it, the better. But it is $14,000, at least in New York and L.A., but it could be a little less elsewhere. And the girls say, well, I don't have that much money. And I'm like, Trust me, your parents will help you out. They want a grandchild. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll contribute to that fund, you know, <laughs> pretty much, pretty certain. <laughs> and uh, so I'm always trying to find solutions because girls are like, oh, my gosh, I didn't get married. Now, I do a lot of events, and I always worry about certain people after the event. And there was one girl. I was at Henry Bendel's. It was Fashion's Night Out, which New York doesn't do anymore because it just got too big. Um, the, the deal was you had to give a check to charity to talk to me. But they said you could only talk to me for 15 minutes. And I said, that's unrealistic. You have to make that longer. The rules are meant to be broken. We're going to talk a little bit longer. There were like 700 people online. So this very pretty girl comes up to me and she said, well, we don't have much time, so I have to talk really, really fast. I was pregnant with twins, and I lost them in the fifth month. And I said, oh, my gosh. Oh. Your, your whole hormones and everything, it just was probably the most horrible experience I can't even imagine. She said, well, my husband left me at that time. And I said, no. Well, maybe you should go to couples therapy because when there's something hard or tragic, it helps. She said, we did that. He's already on the next girl. I mean, everything she was telling me was so shocking. I said, gee, my father would have never done that to my mom. And I know your friends are telling you you dodged a bullet and you're lucky to find out now, but that doesn't really make you feel any better. Oh, my gosh, what is your question? She said, now I have to meet someone else. I'm 37. I have to go through courtship. Uh, he has to be ready for children. Am I ever going to have children? I said, I think you can, yes, because 
you had a very bad aspect at the time, but it wasn't, quote unquote, promised at birth. Mm. It wasn't a glitch in your chart that was always going to make it hard. Of course, you have to ask a doctor, you know, and work with fertility experts. But I think um, I think you will. But I still think of her. And it was funny. That was in September of that year. And then Henry Bindles had me come back to do perfume for Valentine's Day. And again, there was like 500 people online. And she comes up to me and I said, I know you. Are you the girl with the twins? She said, how did you remember? I said, how could I forget to this day I think about you? She hadn't met anybody yet, but I still pray for her. She was so sweet, and she didn't deserve any of this. She didn't create any of it. Sometimes things happen to you that's not your fault. Yeah. And I tend to find that my readers blame themselves. It must have been something I did. You know, or even they lose their job in a downsizing of the company. Well, it's something that management did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that they weren't making enough profit, and you were the one to suffer for that. So... There are times it's our fault, and it's a lot of times it's not, and things just happen. But God wants to get us out of those ruts. And seeing the bigger picture yeah. and seeing how they can utilize whatever is thrown at yeah. them for, you know, tapping into maybe their higher purpose or what they would resonate deeper to their soul or whatever it's, it may be. It's so true. Weak things fall away, and then... The whole universe is built on strength. Mm. So, you know, God looking down, Mary's in a job. She's been there 12 years. She's never gotten a raise. God says, oh, I've been so busy. I haven't been thinking about Mary. i got to get her out of this job. Okay, they're going to have a downsizing. She's going to go home and cry. How am I going to pay my rent? But I have something so much better for her. And she hasn't had a raise in like 12 years. She's going to double her salary. She won't even remember this period. Two months later, she's going to be sitting in a beautiful new office. And and you, you have to see life that way and yeah. not settle and not take the knee-jerk approach. It should be the minute you have an opening, the Chinese say that that reversals create opportunity is so true. It is. You should look at your whole vast array of, of possibilities, not just that knee-jerk reaction. And don't do just, you know, everybody says, okay, you're, you don't have a job. You have to cut back. Well, maybe you should go to a fabulous salon and get a great haircut and a brand new outfit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's worth it. If it makes you feel great and it gives you a better, you know, gives you more confidence to interview in a, in a more strengthful way and, and an impression may leave a good impression, then it's worth it. So sometimes you have to do the opposite of normal thinking, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and you have to, in those tough circumstances, you have to stay away from negative people. Like I knew you'd lo lose that job. I kept telling it. No, you don't want to hear that. I never said it. I t told you so. I never say that to the people close to me. Cause that's so annoying. Yeah. It's, you know, just, don't it, rub salt in the wound, you know. So stay away from people that are tearing you down. Stick with your positive friends. Do research in the library. When you go into those interviews, know about the company. And uh, you're going to do well. No, but I have been born with so much illness. I mean, <laughs> yeah. one friend sat down with me, and uh, I have trouble with my eyes. My digestive system, I mean, I was in the hospital two years because I had ulcers in my intestines and it was bleeding so much they didn't know how to stop it. And I was so sick. I was on rice and water for a year. I kept writing. And it isn't the reader's fault that I'm sick. So I have to put myself in a happy place. I'm basically a happy person. And uh, I feel that the illness has always opened my heart. You know, it's had a really good effect. I even had a dream one night. Uh, once I broke my shoulder because a friend didn't tell me, she said, there's the bathroom. So I, it's at night. I go in that door not knowing there's a flight of stairs. And I walk in and go flying down the flight of stairs and break my shoulder. <sighs> you think she could have told me? She said, the bathroom's right in there. And I didn't know. And I had this dream when I came home that Jesus was sitting at a conference table. And he was saying, you were forgetting you were forgetting the pain you had when you were little. 
I said, do, do you think? I mean, I kind of remember. Are you questioning me? No. No. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> he said, no, you, you'll write better. You, you will. You'll get over this. I'm going to be sure you heal. And I did. <laughs> well, it's, it's that level but, of appreciation. You yeah. know, like I was a really sick kid, too. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. I was in and out of the hospital. They couldn't figure out oh, what wow. was wrong with me. And, Same. And oh, uh, I look at that as I have this love for life and this passion yes. and drive. And, you know, it, when you were saying that, it, you know, remembering and having that dream is like, okay, when we start taking things for granted, then we start forgetting the appreciation of the simplicity of what is oh, it in yes, front of us. Oh, yes, simplicity, definitely. Yes. And there's, when you start to get successful, you have to realize you weren't always successful. Mm-hmm. And people didn't open the door for you. They didn't trust you. They, there's a whole thing in society that makes you fight very hard for <laughs> for your victories, <laughs> you know. Uh, and it's it's a system again, for strength, to pierce those barriers, to show that you're determined and passionate, and of course, have the education or have gone to take classes or whatever it is that you want to do. I'll tell you something really funny. I always wanted to write for magazines, but I was terrified of editors. I'm like, I never went to high school. I went from junior high to college because those were the years I was in the hospital and I had to do homeschool. Ah. So, of course, like, oh, my gosh, editors? I mean, I'm terrified of them. I don't even know how to write a query letter. So uh, one weekend, learning annex said, learn how to write for magazines. I'm like, I'm taking that class. So she taught us how you should look at the cover blurb, see which way the magazine is going, how to write the query letter. And now I write for 10 magazines. That little weekend course gave me the confidence to do it. It's crazy. She said, you're my, <laughs> you're my favorite student. You have to write a, a, a thank you letter to me, you know, so I can yeah. show other people. So I did, you know, yeah. and, um, so sometimes little things you do can just trip the shutter and make it happen. Open the door, you know, mm-hmm. and, our, and our biggest fears <laughs> if we face them can be, you know, look at, I mean, it's no coincidence <laughs> that that was a fear. And now, it- but you know, some, some people say, oh, I want to act, but maybe you have to take some acting yeah, lessons of course. and take feedback. You have to listen to the feedback because you want to get better. And it's hard sometimes. Yeah, It's hard. You know, you have to listen and maybe get a few opinions. But uh, if you have the talent, you it will out, they say. It will come out. And people want to work with intelligent, enthusiastic people. You look at the Academy Award winners, and they're, they're all intelligent. They're all people you'd like as friends because they're smart. Look at Reese Witherspoon. She's now a producer. You know, they, they take charge, and they, they don't wait for other people to give them, you know, the opportunity I, I told a friend last night who wanted to write a screenplay, I said, take classes, even though you know how to do this, because the best thing that comes out of it may be your friendship with the teacher yeah, and your teacher's context. If your teacher wants to help you, it could totally change your life. I said, I love that. You know, <laughs> And the synchronicities and everything, you never know. Uh-huh. Like any interaction is going to give you something if you're open for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's another reason why you have to know what you want because you never know when that opportunity is going to show up at an odd time. And if you've, you know, and your whole body has to be for it. If you want something, but I say the seven layers of your brain, you have to believe it all the way down. If there's a part of you that doesn't think you can do it, it's going to sabotage it. So you have to be altogether unified toward that goal or a dream, whatever you hold in your heart. It could take time, but it's there, you know, and the doors, you know what they say, if you knock long enough and loud enough at the palace gates, somebody somewhere will hear you and let you in. <laughs> I love that image. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> but it is, it's, it's the persistence. It's, uh, it's the commitment to anything. I mean, they mm-hmm. say 10,000 hours to, you know, become an expert at something, but may, way more oh, than yeah, that. I've heard know? of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you say, you know, over 12 years of studying astrology, and that was one of the, the dynamics that your mother gave you, right? It said that you can't well, do she, any other... But, uh, she, said, she said, if you study a year 
I'm going to be very upset with you because you need to understand philosophy and and why things happen. You have to understand the self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm. You may say something to someone. You have to be very careful what you say because that is going to go into I, that person's heart. I love that heart. you you said that because I think that that's a big aspect that healers, um, therapists, coaches, mentors, all they don't understand the power of suggestion. Of suggestion. And that these are people that are coming in, and if you're seen in any level of an authority or an expert or that, you could be planting that seed for the negative of somebody. Well, know? yes, um, and it's terrifying. And they say things off the cuff. I mean, uh, we were discussing why Princess Diana died that night at a class, and we were looking at the progress chart, and I went up to the teacher and I said, I have that aspect in two years. He said, so you'll die too. I <laughs> just like that. And this was an esteemed teacher. Well, the house of death is also the house of surgery. Uh. And two years later, I lost most of my eyesight where I need needles in my eyes with medicine that will help me keep my eyesight. And that was in 2009, and it's been ever since. And... When you get the bill from Blue Cross, <laughs> it says surgery. It doesn't say needle in your eye. And so the house of death is also the house of surgery. It's also the house of taxes. You could be audited or die. You know? <laughs> yeah. So he could never have said that. And what happened with me is I would have surgery every month. Now, who has surgery every month? But technically, that's what's happening to me with those needles every single month. So the astrologer has to be very skilled and never say wild and crazy things. After Monica Lewinsky um, left the scene, they said she was going to be she was going to die in a car crash. I was horrified by these astrologers saying things like this. I don't know where they come from, but you can't allow them into your brain. You can't listen to it, you, and it's hard. You have to throw it off, you know. But I think when you're choosing an astrologer. First of all, you should read their writing um, if they have a, a website or a blog or um, an app or a book. Books are good. But then also go to an astrological convention where we're all there. Mm -hmm. And they have five tracks. They always have a beginner's track. And, and you're having breakfast, lunch, and dinner together because you're all in the same hotel. It's actually fun. We're, there's going to be a big one in Chicago uh, called the United Astrology Conference, on, um, I think it starts May 21st to May 24th. I, I'm definitely going. I have my ticket. And I'm not teaching. I'm just going to sit in the back of the room and listen because I don't want people to say, oh, she never comes. No, I want to come. I want to make friends. But I also want to hear what the, the thinking is. Now, sometimes yeah. I'm horrified and I don't agree. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, sometimes I'll hear something wonderful that will click in my head and say, aha, uh -huh, that little light bulb over your head. And uh, so I'm going, and I think anyone interested in astrology would do well to go to one of those conferences. This is the big one that happens every five years. This won't happen again for five more years. So that's why I'm saying you should go to this one. And then you're just meeting everyone, and you see whose chemistry is good with you. The problem with the Internet is anybody can say they're an astrologer. Yeah. They can take a weekend course uh, and, you know. <laughs> and... You know, I, uh, I was interviewed by BuzzFeed recently, and I was horrified because I'm an astrologer. There's a, a lady out here called Chianti Nichols. She's a real astrologer, although she, she uses astrology to cause a feminist revolution. <laughs> I don't have an ultimate guy, you know, but she, she does know her work. But then there were people like Madame Clairvoyant, who said on Twitter, why am I in this article? I never said I was an astrologer. She was very sweet on Twitter. Nobody asked her. I didn't even know she had a Twitter account, but I read it. And then they, uh, then they had uh, someone who uh, said, my whole job is to make fun of astrology. And I don't, I don't know it. I just have a column to kind of make fun of it. And, and then there was another person she added. I don't remember who it was. 
I couldn't understand why they would put this motley group together, you know. And, and then to the general public, they're looking at is, you know, if they're getting exposure and they're getting publicity, like these are people that they're saying all good. No, are good. And, you know. and then as an astrologer, I have to stick up for the whole group because I'm sticking up for astrology. So it puts me in a hard bind. And I even said to the writer, why why did you do that? So she said, oh, I just thought it was interesting. And it wasn't. It it made fun of the field, you know. Yeah. And, and it, astrology is a very rich tradition that started in Mesopotamia in 2500 B.C. And when I wrote Planets and Possibilities, which I'm going to rewrite now, there's very few copies out there. It was my favorite book. The, I had to write about the history. Mm-hmm. And you'd have the shepherds looking up at the sky as it's becoming dusk. And they didn't have the, the, the lights that we have. Yeah. So they could see, see the, the, um, the meteorites and the, the eclipses. They could see everything. So they began writing it down because they were using the stars as a big calendar. The farmers knew when to plant and when to reap mm-hmm. their and, you know, everything was agricultural in those days. I mean, if you didn't have enough food to feed the populace, you wouldn't, you know, people would die. So people were writing things down. What I found interesting is different cultures, totally separate from each other, that were too far, far away to, to be talking to each other, like India and China and Mesopotamia. They, they were kind of far. Um, were coming to the same conclusions. Mm-hmm. And utilizing and honoring the yes. stars and honoring the art and the science that is combined of astrology to, and, and, you know, back in those days, the astrologer was given the most acclaim in a, in a community. Well, yes, uh, the, it was the province of the king. And he would need a mathematician in a nearby university who could get to the castle on horseback. Because the teacher had to go back <laughs> to school, you know, the professor to teach his classes. So now we have a democratic system where anybody can learn astrology and be exposed to it. But in those days, it was only the wealthy and the royalty that, mm-hmm. that had an astrologer. Yeah. So and, 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 and then it's just it's just interesting to me the differences in um views, you know, that there, there's, you know, at one time honored in such a, a light. And then it's and now, I, th- I mean, I think that we're at that point where we're honoring it again, but there was where it was more complex that that's just hooey wooey stuff, you know? And it's like, no, it's not. There's, there's science to it. There's math. There's, it, there's a huge body of knowledge that, you, <laughs> that takes 12 years to study, you know? There's a lot of integration and I think writing my calendar makes me better. Because let's say I see an aspect that's just great for signing contracts. Mercury conjunct Jupiter. It doesn't get any better than that. So I'm writing that down. I'm like, oh, no. Mercury's going to oppose Neptune. And that's the worst you can get because it clouds everything. You don't really know what you're signing. I would never let anybody sign on a day like that. So it's negating the good you know, and I can't tell my readers to sign on that day. Because I do the calendar, I'm looking into every pore of every day. Now, not every day is important. Once in a while, there's an empty box. But every really important day is written in that calendar. And it's on the homepage of Astrology Zone. And, uh, and I always watch the eclipses. Eclipses so funny. I I had a producer at a TV station. He said, oh, they're falling on new moons and full moons this year. I'm like, no, they always do. <laughs> Remember science when you were in sixth grade? <laughs> <laughs> a solar eclipse is on a new moon and a lunar eclipse is on a full moon. Yeah. And that's what makes lunar eclipses more emotional. And they're usually endings because full moons bring closure. Something ends and something else begins. But solar new moons are, are very interesting because they, uh, they open a brand new path. You get lots of new opportunities and phone calls and and chances to to get ahead. And all the eclipses are tied together like pearls on a necklace. So, like, for example, the ones we're having now are in Leo and Aquarius. 
the first one was February 10th. The second one was August 7th and August 21st. August 21st is when we wore the little glasses and looked uh-huh. up at the sky. And now we're having, we just had one January 31st. So think about what you did around those days. I was asked by Gwyneth Paltrow to speak at Goop to be the only astrologer there. I thought, oh, the fact that this is happening on an eclipse maybe means that there will be other invitations or something will come of it. Look at what you did. See, we have email now. We can see what we were talking about. Yeah. The next one is February uh, uh, 15th. I think a lot of people are going to get engaged, <laughs> especially the uh, Aquarians, Leos, and, and Libras. The, there's a lot of love going on there. And then we have a difficult one, July 27th, and an okay but not great one, uh, August 11th. The best part is the front part of the year. But even bad eclipses, they expose things that we need to know to protect ourselves, and we move forward. So it's okay. It's okay. What would you say would be the most impactful element in an astrology chart? Would it be the eclipses? Would it be a certain planet? Oh. <laughs> well, there's, there's books written on the eclipses before you were born, the one just before you were born. Wow. Um, there's so much, though. There's so many different aspects that I think of those. Do you remember when you were little and your mother read you this fairy tale? This is a little bassinet, and all the fairies came to give the baby gifts, and Saturn gives you wisdom, and, and Venus gives you a love of art and beauty and design and, and helps you have fun, and the moon helps you see your mom in a unique way, and it's the repository of your dreams, and Jupiter is the giver of gifts and luck. So all these little fairies are coming around your bassinet, and yeah... This probably, just like in the fairy tale, is one like, I didn't get invited. I'm throwing thunderballs. We all have some persnickety aspect in the chart. But the baby who grows up with that chart thinks everybody has something like that. Mm. See, they think it's normal. I always did. Yeah. Like, all everybody's in the hospital all the time, right? Yeah. I mean, that's your reality. <laughs> yeah. So... No, really, you you get good at handling the difficulties, but your challenge is to take all the the golden aspects that are glittering all around you. Mm-hmm. Don't be fixated on the one thing because there's so much more. Yeah, life is such a gift. You know, it it's it's a wonderful thing, and astrology will help you see the whole 360, the array of what's there for you, or if you don't have it yet, when it's coming. Okay. And yeah. when, when to uh, take those action steps. So you were starting to touch on, you know, where somebody can actually find a good astrologer. And, yeah. You know, th- so there's these conferences or this one Well, there's also that- clubs. Okay. In America, there's the National Council for Geocosmic Research. I know that's, that's a lot of words, National mm-hmm. Council for Geocosmic Research. But ncgr.com they, they're a dot com because uh, they felt more people would remember that and and you can get in touch with a chapter in your city or very close to your city and they'll recommend people I will recommend people I can't do it but if you write to az press at astrologyzone.com I have people I have vetted people who have written books who have certain specialties if you say you know I want to move to another city You know, this city isn't, whatever city they're talking about, isn't really lucky for me. Well, my friend Bob Marks has made a whole career of relocation. And he will say, what is your goal in the new city? Oh, to find love or to to climb higher in my profession. Whatever it is, he will move the chart around and find the longitude and latitude that's best for you. You know, and uh, yeah, there's medical astrologers. There's people who specialize in different things, you know, um, our wedding days, <laughs> whatever it is. And we read every letter because we have to. If you didn't get a book or something. Oh, by the way, I'd like to talk about this book that I um, I developed called mypersonalhoroscope.com. Okay. Um, 
My children say, you need to change your medication, Mommy. Writing a book, one book for each person who, <laughs> who orders it is crazy. But I do it anyway because I know people can't afford an astrologer because they get at least $300, if not more. And uh, this book will tell you your chart in 65 pages. Each chapter is, and we, we mentioned your name, like Laura has Venus in Aquarius. Laura has the moon in Aries, whatever it is, and it tells you what that means. And it's just about your natal chart. It has the wheel in the front, has a little legend to tell you what the hieroglyphics mean. And then when you read Astrology Zone for free, you know, I write 3,000 words every month. I'm always mentioning if you're born on this birthday or that birthday, or if you have a planet at this degree, you're going to know. And you never have to do the book again. It is $59.95 plus shipping. I know it's a lot, but it takes me <laughs> it takes me two re- weeks to write it. And you say, well, you must get thousands. No, I've had this book for 10 years, so I only get a few orders a month. So I have plenty of time to write it. And people love it. I also have one for babies. Now, the baby book is more about the, the child's talents and what they inherited from the mother and father. And we use the mother and father's name. I say, you know, you got to give it to me and you got to give me the mother and father's sign, not their birthday, just their sign. And then I talk about what the, the baby got from the family and also from the stars and what what things you can buy for the child. Like, that's is this a, child great with computers or with music or, you know, whatever. That's amazing. <laughs> and both of them are only the fifty nine ninety five. dollars Yeah. Yeah. That's a, and that's I get them steal. in two and a half weeks. Now, we had a lot of trouble sending these books to uh, Brazil. <laughs> I know it's crazy, but uh, things were constantly getting lost in Brazil. I think, I don't, I don't really know why. So for them, we send a PDF and we say, please use really beautiful paper. Some people even put it with a squiggly wire and make an actual book out of it. But we send you the, the PDF quicker, a little bit quicker, mm-hmm. and uh, so they don't have to wait. Yeah. And it's color. Everything's color. We have a lady, um, Jacqueline Schaefer from Belgium, who did all these beautiful designs to the book. So it's a keepsake, and I'm just trying to help people find out about themselves. Yeah. Also, I have an app on Apple and Google, Susan Miller's Astrology Zone Daily Horoscopes, but it's a total misnomer because all my essays are on there. My uncut monthly is on the free version and the paid version, but the paid version has longer dailies. Um, but if you say, no, sure, it is fine for me, then get the free. I'm on Alexa, and I'm on the little dot. You say, Alexa, wake up. So she says, okay, open Astrology Zone. I'm ready. And then she says, what sign are you? And you say, oh, I'm Libra. Give me today's horoscope. And then you could say, open astrology zone. I'm Libra. Give me tomorrow's horoscope. And she talks to you. How amazing. It's so cute. I love it. I use it also for when I'm writing. Alexa, how do you spell paparazzi? How do you spell algorithm? <laughs> I don't have to look it up. <laughs> I'm the worst with spelling. <laughs> oh, gosh. I would be sitting there with dictionaries all the time, but she helps you. <laughs> And she'll play music. So, I mean, it's only 30, I think it's $39. I don't know how much it is. Somebody gave it to me, but it's not much. And it's, um, it's easy to install. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not listening to you all day. You can turn it off. You don't have to have it on because there's been some news reports. She's listening to what you're saying. I'm not saying anything that a kindergarten class could yeah. listen to. I mean, I'm not worried. Like, oh, I should go to Staples and get some more paper. You know, like, yeah, who cares? <laughs> who you know? cares? Like, yeah, but you can turn it off and the little lights go off, you know. So, uh, so. so with, um, you know, I do want to talk a little bit about that we're having you at Liberate Hollywood. Oh, I'm so excited. On... Uh, on February 17th, 17th, which is a Saturday. We're going to have you from 1 to 4, and that's that's for the general, but the, also a special at noon mm-hmm. for the people that are VIP and can come and have a more intimate experience with you and hear all of your amazing wisdom <laughs> and everything that you have to offer. And it's way, it like, you know, I hope that the listeners that are hearing this is the tremendous soul wisdom that you have and you can mm. share um, on and beyond the astrology mm. and how much you can pick up from somebody or how much you know the planets or the nodes or this or that. You you know people and you have this beautiful heart that really wants to make oh. <laughs> people's lives better. So having that ability to sit and 
be in your company for an hour and have that experience is going to be priceless. Those are the VIP Those tickets. are the VIP. And then the four hour is going to be amazing or three hours. Well, I'm going to do too. a lot of question and answer. My director said, Susie, why don't you do all question and answer? So I tried it out once at Soho House. Mm-hmm. So I went back to him. I said, I did it. He said, you listen to me? I said, Paul, always. And he, he said, well, how did it go? I said, it was so exciting and vibrant. When people ask questions, I ask them to make the question in a way that is interesting to many people. There's many ways you can ask a question. You know, you can say the long way. I hated my boss. I lost my job. I've been looking for three months. Yeah. <laughs> or the short way. I'm a Gemini. I'm out of work. When is my best shot at finding a new wonderful job? <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's interesting to every Gemini sitting in the audience or who have Gemini rising or who have a friend who would like to know the answer. So people really listen and they do ask in an interesting, quick way. That's why I can answer more questions. By the way, the rising sign is the sign that was on your eastern horizon as you were being born, and it is just as important as your sun sign. So every month, if you're going to get the most from me, and read Astrology Zone on your sun sign, you know, that's the birthday sign, and your rising sign. Now, if you're a little cusp baby, you really do have to do a chart. I mean, well, even if you want to know your rising sign, you have to do a chart because everything is so mathematical. But the little cuspers, they always feel that they're nobody's child, but they, they're really lucky because they take the best of both signs. Yes. Like if you're born on the cusp between Aries and Taurus, you have all the entrepreneurial ability of Aries and all the sensuousness of Taurus and the practicality of Taurus. Beautiful blend. So just the opposite, they're really lucky. So... Um, now, you'll pick up a lot of information, and uh, I find people ask really good questions. Yeah, and, and I bet that they spark that curiosity in you, too, because I mean, you're, you're always oh, learning yeah. from everybody, right? Totally. They make me better. I want to know what people want to know. People have been asking about jobs lately and not so much about romance, and that makes me worried about the economy, because when we went through 2008, 2009, nobody asked about love at all. And then over, you know, subsequent years, they started asking only about love. But now, well, I was at Fresh and I was doing an event. Everybody asked about jobs. We'll see what happens at Liberate Hollywood, what they're asking about. So that gives me a pulse. What are people thinking about, you know? Wow. That's so cool. (laughs) I mean, that you can just hear that. If um, If you had to leave the listeners with one thing, what would it be? There's so much inside you so much strength, so much talent that you may not have discovered or developed yet. But by having your chart done once, or at least reading what I have to write, you'll start to get an inkling of that strength within. And once you find it, it's stronger every year. And it makes you feel so proud In astrology, the the sun is a symbol of a circle with a dot in the middle. I was wondering, what is that dot in the middle? And I found it in all the books. The dot in the middle is the divine spark within. We all share it. We all have it. Just have to bring it out. Oh, this just brought <laughs> tears to my eyes. Thank you so much. Thank you. This has been fun, and I was just a prelude to our, our time together on February 17th in Los Angeles. Yes, I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to spend more time with you and learn more. Where can, uh, what's your URL? I have it on mine, right on the homepage mm-hmm. of astrologyzone.com. It says sold out. Yes. But... It, we may get a couple of cancellations, so if you're disappointed, give a call. But yes. what's your website address? It's liberatehollywood.com. Oh, just like it sounds. Yeah, just like it sounds. <laughs> so liberatehollywood.com, and we still have some of those VIP tickets available. Yeah, they're and more expensive. They're more expensive. They're $75, mm-hmm. but they come with the calendar, with oh, uh, really? uh, with, oh. the, with the crystal kit and all this other stuff. Oh, that wow, we're little putting. goodies. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So they'll get some Moldavite. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Stone. Oh no, but, but I gotta find out about yeah. that. <laughs> oh wow, I can't wait. This will be great. And we want to meet you, dear listener, and hope you'll come. All right. Until <laughs> next time, thank you for joining. <laughs> Bye-bye.